Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's so good to see you. Today I'm going to tell you one thing I learned when I lived in Israel. Now, I went to Israel for graduate school. I had just finished my bachelor's degree at the University of Missouri, and I couldn't decide, do I want to travel? Do I want to get a job? Do I want to go to grad school? And I thought, if I can combine two of those three things, why not? I loved Israel, I had been to Israel twice, and the second time I visited Israel when I was a senior in college, I was like, I feel like I could live here. Like, if you've ever been to Tel Aviv, it's just such a cool city, it's such a livable city, and I just, I just fell in love with it the second time I went there. So, I decided to go to grad school. I went to Tel Aviv University. Um, I did an international program that was in English, and I had classmates from all over the world, classmates from Germany, France, Sweden. Um, I had a classmate who uh, survived Darfur, who escaped Darfur. Um, just, uh, I had classmates from India, just really cool people from all over the world. And I learned so much and I really grew so much as a person in that year. In fact, I am a, an American girl like through and through. I'm a Midwest girl born and raised in Missouri. I love living in Missouri, but I really feel like I became an adult when I lived in Israel for that year. The first thing I learned in that year is that God provides. Now, whether that is God providing finances, yes, but in my case, it was God providing things that I needed that money really couldn't buy, like friends, like a safe apartment to live in, um, a bed to sleep in. You know, that's that's what God provided for me. Yes, of course, the, the money, I was able to use American financial aid to fund my schooling and to fund my living there. You know, yes, I, I do believe that was part of God providing for me, but there are just some things God provides that money can't buy. It's actually an interesting story. So I, another scary thing that I did that I can tell you about if, if you want to hear about this later, when I was 18, this is so crazy, when I was 18 and freshly graduated from high school, I spent a month in Guatemala by myself, okay? And that's a whole other, another story, but in that summer, I had a roommate, a girl named Anna. And Anna has a Jewish mom and a black dad. And so we just had like a lot to talk about as biracial, multicultural women with, with curly hair. We just had a lot to talk about. And eventually at some point, Anna's sister ended up making Aliyah to Israel. Making Aliyah is what you call uh, a Jewish person immigrating to Israel. It means to ascend. It's a very beautiful, beautiful uh, concept. So um, Anna's sister ends up making Aliyah to Israel and we become Facebook friends because I start becoming interested in Israel after meeting Anna. Not because I met Anna, like, but I just, I started that journey around that same time. So I post on Facebook, I'm moving to Israel. I was accepted to Tel Aviv University. I'm studying political science and political communication. And I knew I didn't want to live in the dorms at Tel Aviv University because someone I'm connected with who did the, the same program as me had advised me, uh, you know, living in the dorms, it's really not it. It's very isolating. Campus is pretty far removed from the city center, so it's it's very isolating. And that's my advice to anyone, by the way, who wants to study abroad in Israel. If you're going to Hebrew University or Tel Aviv University, I recommend not living in the dorms. That's a different conversation. But anyway, so I didn't even know how to find a place to live if I wasn't living in the, the dorms. I didn't even know like, you know, is there an apartments.com for, for Israel? And is it all going to be in Hebrew? And how am I going to find a place to sleep when I first get to Israel if I am in America? I'm going to need a place to live when I get there. And I just really wasn't sure what to do. So my church at the time did Saturday night prayer. 
And at the end of this Saturday night prayer meeting, they would you know, gather everyone at the front and they would ask everyone, do you have a prayer request? And I raised my hand and I said, yes, I have a prayer request. I'm moving to Israel in less than a month and I don't know where I'm going to live. I need an apartment and I need roommates and I need friends. So my church, you know, gathered and they prayed, you know, God, please provide destiny with, with um, an apartment and that's safe and with good roommates that she'll be friends with and, and furniture that she doesn't have to put together herself and, you know, and all of that. And the next morning when I was driving to church, I got a Facebook message from Anna's sister who made Alia. And the message was, hi, Destiny. We've never met before, but I'm Anna's sister. And I saw your Facebook post that you are moving to Tel Aviv. And she had been living in Haifa all this time, which is a couple hours north of Tel Aviv. But she was wanting to move to the Tel Aviv area and she was looking for a roommate. So I said, absolutely, this is an answer to prayer. You have no idea. And me uh, and a sister and a third girl ended up all moving in together. It was so special because it was the first time all three of us had ever lived on our own in Israel. Um, uh, Anna's sister, the, the girl who contacted me, she had made Alia from New York and had been living with just like different like friends and, and kind of sleeping in people's like spare bedrooms, I think. And the third girl, um, a really funny girl, she had made Alia, she also was Israeli American. She had made Alia when she was a little girl with her whole family. Like she had lived there since she was like nine, like eight or nine years old. And she had gone through the Israeli military, etc. So this was really her first time living on her own too. And the three of us just had so much fun and we laughed and we, um, you know, just really had nothing. And I remember the first thing we really bought, cause we didn't have anything. I mean, I came there with like two suitcases and a backpack, like just that's it. And the first thing we bought was a dining room table. Cause we were like, we need, you know, we need somewhere to sit and eat. And if nothing else, if we get a dining room table, we can at least sit and eat, you know? And um, like, I remember when we got the dining room table, we just like loved it. And it was like old, we had gotten it from like a secondhand store for new immigrants because Israel just as a society is very immigrant friendly because it's, it's a shared experience that, that kind of everyone in society can relate to of like being a new immigrant, of um, trying to like integrate into a new country. So there's, there's a lot of services and a lot of um, like help for new immigrants, thank God. So we went to like a, a secondhand store for new immigrants and just like bought this kind of rickety old table that was like, you know, it was old, but it was like sturdy, you know, and we just loved it. And we just looked at it. We took pictures of it and we bought placemats for it. And we bought like a table runner for it. And uh, one of my roommates uh, is a florist. She works, or she's a, a floral designer. So she like builds structures out of flowers. And she brought home like a beautiful uh, flower arrangement for our table and we just stared at it and we were like, wow, you know, this is the best, most beautiful dining room table anyone has ever had and we just loved it. And our apartment was Paris themed and we called it Wonderland and uh, I called it that. <laughs> I called it that and we just loved it. And. Um, you know, sometimes we think of God providing as being, you know, God providing money or God providing, um, you know, like finances. But, you know, God can also provide things that money can't buy. Like, yes, uh, money could buy an apartment, but money couldn't have bought me good roommates that would become, you know, lifelong friends for me. I still, they are both, they both still live in Israel. Um, but I still talk to them. I keep in touch with them. I try to see them every time I go there. You know, money couldn't buy a safe apartment for me. Um, also, the walls in the apartment were pink, which if you know me, my favorite color, my favorite color is, my favorite color is pink. And 
it just like was such a cool way of seeing like wow like god loves me god delights in every detail of my life he you know provided these beautiful amazing wonderful roommates for me and provided this amazing apartment for me and he had the walls painted pink for me like if you seek first the kingdom of god and live righteously all these will be added to you the bible says it says that in matthew you know it also says that god directs the steps of the godly that he delights in every detail of their lives you know it doesn't have to just be about about money it can be friendships it could be you know safety just little signs showing us that, that God loves us, that he delights in every detail of our lives. But that's what I learned in the one year I lived in Israel. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or, I don't know, if there's anything else you want to hear about, just let me know. Send this to a friend who you think would like it or, um, yeah, I just would love to hear from you guys. I'll see you later. Bye.